everybody, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com, and today we've got a look at a new plugin from Sonox, the Oxford Drum Gate. And this plugin takes drum gating, in my opinion, to the next level by adding together several elements that make it possible to cleanly and efficiently gate almost any drum recording, kick, snare, and tom, no matter if it's the best recording you've ever heard or if it's a really, really rough sounding recording with lots of bleed from other instruments, this can get the trick done. So first of all, it uses some machine learning, some intelligent detection algorithms to tell the difference between the snares, the kicks, the toms, and then bleed from cymbals and such, rather than just gating anything below a certain set threshold level. It also employs some frequency dependent decay. If you look in this second um, tab right here, where you can allow certain frequencies to decay more naturally. For example, if you want a tom hit to decay and not have all that cymbal wash and cymbal bleed on top of it, you can just decay where the tom's resonant frequency lives only, which is very cool. And then the third tab over here is a drum leveler. This sells as a separate plugin by some companies. And this drum leveler can take a transient level and then find it and attach it to some set target level. So you can bring the hits down, you can bring them up, you can make them all more consistent. You can split and have between, say, ghost notes, a top level and a lower level for full hits and ghost notes. It's amazing. And this is, like I said, a separate plugin for some, from some companies. And finally, you have a MIDI out. You can do a live MIDI out to trigger samples, or you can capture the MIDI and drag it as a MIDI file and play it in whatever virtual instrument you choose. So with all of those elements together, it's a really fantastic tool. So let's go back to the detection here. The first thing we want to do is hear this on kick drum, and you're going to kind of see what the detection circuit does. So I'm going to bypass the plugin to begin with and play the kick track. Here we go. Okay. Now I'm going to engage the plugin. You're going to see the transients represented above the threshold with a little yellow uh, filled in upside down triangle. Below will be white. Already it has a really natural sound and gating without me moving anything. I haven't changed one setting here. If you really want to get dialed in, you can then move over to the match transient section and select the instrument you're looking for. Here we have a kick drum. I'm going to lower the threshold. Now you see this one right here. With the traditional gate, this transient is above the threshold. That would have come through. But this plugin knows that that particular transient was not a kick drum and gated it out anyway. Pretty amazing. Even if I drop that threshold, I don't have to keep fiddling around with it and release times and hold times to make it really work. This is a pretty clean sounding kick track to begin with, but even if you had a rough sounding uh, kick track with lots of bleed, it would still work phenomenally well. Now let's say we wanted to take the fundamental of that kick drum and make that ring out a little bit longer. We can do that here. So I can see a lot of my energy is down here in this waterfall plot. I'm going to drop this down so where the kick lives in the sort of 40 to 200 hertz range. And with this slider, I can make that range decay at a different rate. and it's letting that full low end bleed through. If I went over to the leveler and I turn up the leveling, I can bring this down, making all my hits softer, bring it up, making them all louder, and that's without any compression, that's just adjusting the envelope of the transient that you're getting through there. So some amazing results on the kick drum part there. Now, if we take the same concept and move over to snare drum, let me move the plug-in on the snare drum track here. First of all, I'll bypass it. Here's the snare drum track. So you can definitely hear more bleed on that. I'm gonna engage the plug-in.
It's doing a good job of detecting those transients. I'll pick snare just to make sure it's doing it in the match transient section. So the first try, the first pass through, I didn't like the cutoff of the gate. The gate was closing too fast. It wasn't allowing that snare tone to ring through. I go over the decay time. I dial in where the most of the energy of the snare drum lives, bring up that frequency range's decay time, and suddenly that resonance really comes through. Sounds a lot more natural. And of course, I can go to the leveler here and change the levels as well. If I go back to detection here, if you had some false hits where some transients were popping above, you could play a loop of the audio and remove some of the matches and kind of help teach the plugin what to not trigger for. You can change some transient settings for more higher sensitivity if you want some really ghost notes to come through or lower sensitivity, sensitivity if you're getting some double hits. You've got a side chain filter if you want to dial out some of that low end, for example, if you're getting a lot of kick drum bleed on a snare drum track. So some of those typical settings you'd see on a normal gate. So the last example of what I'd like to look at here is on a tom track. Let's listen to it with the plug-in bypassed. So you have that one tom hit. It kind of rings out for a while, even with the other bleed in there. Listen to it again. So you can hear that ring of the floor tom, even when you're getting some snare and cymbal bleed in there. I'm gonna turn the plugin back on, see how it does detecting the transients. So not quite as strong. We're gonna move over to the match transients pick tom. So you could tell it's allowing the rack tom to trigger on that one hit. So I bring this threshold up a little bit. Bypass. Again, I'll raise it up so we don't get that double hit. Okay, so you can hear it kind of cuts off really abruptly. I'll go to the decay tab. I'll move it up a little closer. So a lot of the energy comes right down here. I'm gonna raise that decay time. I could go even farther. You get such a much more natural slope at the end of that release time. And you hear a little bit low end of the snare come through, but that's okay. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be masked by the snare itself anyway, and you get a much more natural sustain. So all in all, the Oxford drum gate is a fantastic addition to gating for drums. It will definitely surpass what you can achieve with a stock or traditional gate plug-in. And it will definitely hold its own with some of the newer gate plugins from companies like Slate Digital, who had a new drum gate come out, and FabFilter Pro G, which is a really nice gate. This one, in my opinion, does the job easier and faster and sounds really, really natural. So two thumbs up for me for this one. The Oxford drum gate, fantastic. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in the next one.